We'll open the final council meeting for 2022. Um, Taku, would you like to start us off when we can join in with our karakia? Sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder that we are being live streamed and to use the microphones. We've got apologies this morning from Councillor Nalo and Councillor Wehippi, so I'll move that to put it on the table, seconded by Councillor Haywood. Sorry, first hand up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. All those against? Carried. Now we've got three speakers in our public forum. So Maureen, would you like to come up first? So you've got, if you turn the microphone on, and you've got five minutes. Yep, there we go. Floor's yours. For uh, Fungimania, kia ora na tātou kātou toa. So ni, uh, Maureen Tukaro Beetham, a resident from, well, I was born in Pōneke, but I have been raised uh, in Pōrero since I was one. Uh, my submission is... Uh, about the residents that I have lived in with my with my ana with my ainga uh, since 2004 on Kahu uh, Road and the the cars that speed up and down it quite a lot. I have put this forward through to council previously, but I uh, spoke to a woman that uh, pushed that back a number of years back. Um, and I really wanted something to be done for my neighbours, for my family, for my children, for my moko, um, in terms of the cars that you know, continually to speed up and down uh, the street, uh, breaking the, the speed limit. Uh, and, it, and we've been there like 18 years. Um, yeah, so I don't know what it's going to be or what it's going to take, but I know I have the support from our neighbourhood and uh, they seem to love coming around the corner and burning up it or burning down it. Yeah, so that's that's really what I'm here for, is to see what the council can do after the submission that I made previously a number of years to a woman here at Puriro City Council got the pushback. And uh, thank you for hearing me, uh, Mia, and seeing you at Creekfest. <laughs> that's right, let's see if the council has got questions. Yes, Councillor Ford. Kia ora na, Maureen. Thanks for coming in this morning. Just a question on the pushback. Can you give us a little bit more um, yeah. info on that? that? That was pushback from council staff? Or uh, yeah, from... council staff. I can't remember her name, and I tried to find the evidence of it, and at the time it wasn't a priority. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, it, was, it would have been a number of years ago. Um, Councillor Ford, okay, I just can't remember. Um, and then the other thing, you talked about your neighbours being supportive of it. Do you yeah. have, like, did you go and, is there any... No, I haven't done anything oh, like that, yeah. But I know I can if I needed to, uh, apart from one neighbour coming to me and saying, you need to do something about it. And I was like, oh, how about you do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, we've got a really good uh, neighbourhood uh, group, and I know if I need it, I will get it. But, you know, we talked about speed humps amongst us and talked about, um, you know, those things that... Chicanes. Mm. Um, and then... Um, the Spokes. The, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> the camera. I'll go sit out on the street and... Uh, yeah. Cool. Catch a point. That's the Haywood next. Uh, uh, kia ora. Um, thank you for taking the time to come in and, and uh, talking about this, Taki. Uh, here, when did... Um, by your reckoning, these uh, issues start, and when did you approach the council the first time about this? Oh, like I said to Councillor Ford, I can't remember the date, but this has been a thing since I've lived there. Um, I thought, shall I go out and sit on the road with my cell phone and <laughs> take photos and videos? But yeah, it, it has been a, a, a while. Yeah. Ahi um, no. The uh, other question I had was, 
can you just give a description of the type of traffic we're talking here? Is it cars or is it uh, dirt bikes or is it everything in between? Um, can you just give me some sense if this is yeah. uh, you know, a group of individuals or a group of cars or it's actually everybody or relatively every, you know, every well, type? It's, it's, it's cars. It's, it's mm. yeah, it's um, SUVs. It's, it's whoever decides that they want to speed up and down Kahu Road outside our properties um, you know, on a good day, on a bad day, whatever day. And, um, you know, they're breaking the speed limit. And I remember the woman that I did talk to from Purirua City Council saying that, uh, you know, it wasn't a priority. There had been no uh, accidents uh, or, and I was thinking, okay, does someone need to die before something happens about this? And, uh, yeah, so that's that's that. Go for more talk, I'll do no more questions. Councillor Leggett. <coughs> uh, thanks, Maureen. Um, I used to live in Kahu Road. Oh, okay. Um, so, what number? What numbers, Kahu? What number am I? Yeah. One, two, six. One, two. Oh, really? <laughs> so. Did you live in. Uh, <laughs> one, one, two, four. Um, uh, I know that house well. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I think we're a few years before that. Um, yeah. I just wondered, uh, did you have any idea of times, any particular times that vehicles sped there? Uh, no, just the day, oh, the night, it sort of kind of revved up a little bit more at night, but to be to be honest with you, Councillor Leggett, it wasn't a particular day. It's It's quite a lot. Of times okay. during the week. Uh, are you there during the day? I am sometimes when I'm working right. from home. Yeah. Right. And uh, just one other question: D Do you see an issue? Do you see that issue exacerbated by the buses that travel up and down there? The very large buses. No, it's not the buses. No, no. I'm, oh, sorry. I, the buses don't speed, but yeah. they um they they may um cause other problems as well. Uh, so sorry, uh, in terms of what council legit in oh, terms of the buses? Just, it's a very narrow, well, it is narrow when people are parked on both sides and yes. buses can make it worse yes. because they take up <clears> a lot of space and you have to stop and start and give way, etc. Yeah, and that kind of happens. That's not quarterly. that's not the issue you're worried about. Yeah, you're yeah, no, that's that kind of happens quarterly. You know, you give way to the to the traffic coming up and, and yeah. same with the buses, they, they, they stop when they're coming down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for mine, it's not. It's not. Okay. Thank I'm going to move on because I've got another five. Councillor Trollin. Thanks. Um, I'll be quick because Ross and Jeff asked <laughs> most of my questions. Um, but it, it was just in particular. I know one of the problems we have is often decisions we make around things like um, speed bumps. It's based on a list of priority, and often it does come down to accidents that have happened. They don't always get reported to council. Do you know if there have been any incidents, like actual crashes or anything like that, that's happened on the road that? That, that you can remember? Because that may have happened and we, we may just not have it recorded. No. Uh, only one accident I can remember was when a, 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 a young woman crashed into a parked uh, vehicle. And then my husband ran out to, to help her and she ended up in our house, looked after her, so the evidence came, but I can't remember anything. Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. And, and then the other one was just... In terms of uh, the conversations you've had with your neighbours, and you mentioned things like speed bumps, w was that what you settled on as being probably the, the best solution? There need to be speed no, bumps in particular no, places? No, we, we or? were just yeah, doing a little bit of brainstorming over yeah. the fence, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And and do you think, is it just around a particular place, like close to where you are, or is it down the whole road? Or? Uh, no, it's probably close to where we are because the, 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 you have the top of the where, where I'm talking about, our, our street, Kahu, but it goes on that way, and and then it comes down. There's a kind of a nice straight, mm. and then a nice curve. Yeah. So, so long there. Around there. <laughs> yeah. Councilor Johnson. Good <laughs> Anna Maureen. It's well good to hear your thank you for your time today and um, what you've the detail of what you've brought to us. Um, Chair, I'm wondering if it's appropriate for us to get a paper or maybe, um, Wendy, you have some thoughts on what how we could move this forward and get a bit more detail. Yeah. Um, 
probably not a paper, but we can certainly go and have a look at this issue um, and understand um, if anything's changed since the um, last time this was considered. So um, I can come back to councillors about that and to you, Maureen. Sure. Thank you. Councillor Fiso? Bilo, sorry, sorry, I'm just. <laughs> oh, it's had a name change. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, well, kia Maureen. Uh, and in actual fact, everybody's answered my questions, so I'll just take the opportunity to thank you for coming. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Duncan. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming, Maureen. My son lives in Kahu Road. Oh, okay. Um, I, I just wonder, have you approached the police about this? No. So you, ha you haven't tried that. That might be a good avenue to start with, actually. They, they can do some uh, checks and what's going on there. Um, speed bumps, honestly, chicanes, I'd advise you steer well clear of those things. They're, they just create a challenge for people who like okay. to speed. Yeah. Banner boxes? Anything? Something? Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's your personal yep. point of view. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. We will come back to you. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, Dennis, Dennis Macalio. Now, Dennis is going to um, do his own recording. I think, are you Dennis at the same time? No, no, no. you're not now. Okay. Kia ora, my name is Dennis Macalio. Um, I've been here most probably about as, maybe even longer than you. Living in Porirua. No? Well, well, then you'll know where I'm coming from when I speak. Hey, I'm, I'm speaking here on behalf of the Red Whanau, the 22 chapters and our deceased, okay, and the misconduct with uh, City Council for the last year of what we'll be having problems with. And our biggest problem is, uh, is the communication, uh, is the lack of uh, not responding to our emails properly, um, is the actual insults, insults like we've made up our mind before you walked in the door, Okay, all kinds of insults, and we're sick of it. All we want to do hey, for our dead hey, is let them live in peace and let us do what we need to do to remember them. Okay, bringing them to politics and into our Uru part does not work. So that's where I'm going to go on to the prohibition of gang insignia. Prohibition of gang insignia was brought out after Michael Lord went to court up in Wanganui. After, after he went to court in Wanganui and it was preached that he, he used all these, these different acts to breach the Bill of Rights for our club whanau. <clears throat> after that, City Council here tried the same tactic again now, back in 2012, and I had the same lawyers there come into Poro City Council. Okay, from there we had the agreement, we came up, we talked about things, we were prepared to go to court. Now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, ordinary employees from city council, they think they can do the powers of government hey, without going through the proper procedures. Okay? Hey, and, and I'm talking about a city council conduct. Okay? It's disgusting. Okay? Things that are happening in closed doors that ain't being brought around the round table, hey, hey, we feel offend offensive. Okay, now, after that, after that incident in Wanganui, the government decided to bring out the Prohibition Gang Insignia Law 2013. Now, council is always trying to say us, we're going to use the Gang Insignia Law. We're going to use the Gang Insignia Law on our headstones. Well, in fact, this was brought out for only government buildings only. Okay? Government buildings. In the last meeting I had with council, hey, and Andrew says, our... Our little, our little church up there is the government building. These are the kind of attitudes we're getting back. Okay? When you bring this in, what this actually means, it means I can't... If you bring this in, which I have got an email from Wendy saying that it has been put into the management draft, okay, without even consultations, without even submissions, nothing. No processes. And this is the arguments we've been having while asked to be brought up here today. I've asked them if they talk to Nati Tor because if this goes in, where can we be buried? Okay, with our, with, with our uniforms. We, we, we're not allowed to go up there and visit our loved ones. By law, by law, this. 
But the only thing they talk to you about is gang insignia. We, we've got them. Okay, but by law, this means we are not allowed on them grounds. Okay? Are you going to help pay us to uplift them, uplift our loved ones? And I hope you go hard on me on questions because I really want to resolve this. Okay? Because we are ready to go to court. How court procedures happen is when you go to court, the judge, and, and, I've, and, I've, and I've guided counsel when I've had my last four meetings with them, I've guided counsel and explaining to them how it works, and that is if we can't resolve things here. Now, there are a few things that they've told us that they will not respond to. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go to court eh, and do the same as Wanganui and, and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for our community again, because I've got the same lawyers as, as I brought here on the, tw on the 12th, They've told me you've got a case to answer to. You can't use this in, in our Uru Pass. And the crazy thing is, you know, you're using the things like offensive. We've got a letter. And they're sending me the same letter and saying it was back in 2008. Well, I've got a copy of that letter. It was 2006. Uh, and that letter was the last time we had an argument here when someone was uplifted. That had nothing to do with headstones. That had nothing to do with a gang insignia. That was a behaviour problem. Okay, so where we do from here? Uh, 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 I would just like counsel to answer our questions. When I send them a copy of um, what has been said into these meetings, I'm not getting a proper response back. And I need these proper responses back. So when I do go to court, okay, the judge has seen that I've done my work. But I really feel that um, hey, I've been, we've been offended. Um, they said they had 80% of uh, Poro supporting it, or you supporting it, uh, Ngāti Toa supporting it. I've had a hui with Ngāti Toa. I mean, where do we go to get buried if you bring this bylaw in, in the Cemetery Act? Where do we go? Because this is what it's for, government buildings. And what, is all our churches now government buildings? You know? This is the attitude we get, okay? Even the mayor sitting outside my job, can I not come to council, okay, before after, until after the election, until after we get rid of Wendy Walker, okay? Then I've been hearing rumours, oh, they've talked to me and we've said things like, oh, they've agreed that we're going to reduce our patches to our cards. We agreed back in 2012 we'll take any, anything that could be offensive for, like, the German sign, seek fucking hell and all that. But we've well, also guided them in saying, all you got to do is ring up the, the, uh, the, the Human Rights Commissioner. Okay, is it, is it offensive? Right here, right now, what is offensive? You know, by law. You can ring up, I've, I've told them, you can ring up the police commissioner and ask them if we've broken any laws. And they keep just saying back, no, no, we're doing it, we're doing it. We've already made up our mind. I'm sick of it. Okay, thank you, Dennis. So you nearly, because I've let you go extra time, but are we nearing, because I'll open it up Hey, I could questions. go on forever, because <laughs> this is all the paperwork, all the emails, everything from the very beginning from Michael Lord, uh, from, from, yeah, from, I'm just sick of it. I didn't come here prepared. I just thought I'm just going to let it out, okay? Okay. And, and, and I want you to thrash me. Thank and you. I'll I will open them up for questions. So I'm sure there will be questions. Councillor Ford? Kia ora tālofa. Thanks, for, Dennis, for coming in this morning. Um, I'm just curious about the 80% um, in terms of submissions that were in favour of no gang insignia. Can I get some indication from staff when that consultation happened? I don't recall it in my time. We haven't had a consultation on gang insignia. Okay. So when, when Dennis is mentioning the 80%, that, is, that doesn't actually exist. That is staff going back and saying that 80% voted in favour, but there, that actually isn't. No. Okay, cool. No. That wasn't the context of the discussion. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, sorry. And then the other question I had, it seems that um, precedents or resolutions have been created over the time since 2012, I think, when the when the council voted to introduce a bylaw. Um, would that be right? Because, uh, I mean, I've been up there, I've buried loved yeah. ones up there, and there are gang insignia mm. beside, you know, like... And, and graves that are beside it. So I just wonder, there must have been some kind of resolution that took place in order for those who have passed on to then still have... We, well, there was, and I've got that paperwork here. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there must have been some sort of conversation that, that, that you've had with our staff in order to arrive at some kind of resolution so that you could have gang 
insignia on the, um, the, the, the... The resolution was, Wendy Walker, see, we made up our mind before you walked in the door, Dennis. Okay. Okay? But what they have said to us, what they have said to us was, you can have mongo mob up there, you can have the bulldog on the front, you can have the bottom rocker there, but you can't have it all together. And I reminded them, you know, law is you have got the right for the size. Yes, you have got the right if it's uh, offensive. But all I've been asking them to do, and I've been waiting for a year, ask the police if it's, a, it's or the, uh, the, uh, the, the human's right, is it offensive? Hey, you know, is it, is it, are we breaking the law? And we already know the answers. And, 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 and by saying that, hey, this is, a, this, is, this, this is disgraceful how we want to remember our loved ones. No, I was just, just going to say, I mean, back then when, you, when we did, or that was before my time, but when that bylaw was passed, it was around offensive words and stuff, so swastikas and things like that. Yeah, and that's Sweet. what we agreed to. Which, um, yeah. And we've stuck to, and they've accepted patches since then. Yep. But now they're telling me, oh, we don't know how they slipped through the crack. Mm. Okay, cool. Councillor Trillin. Yeah, cheers, thank you, and thanks for coming in, Dennis. <clears throat> um, I was wondering if you could just talk us through, just for our understanding, um, what, what it would look like from your perspective if, if we were to do what, what you're asking around uh, allowing you to, to visit your loved ones. Um, is this around just being able to regularly visit? Is this around funeral ceremony? Or, and could you just talk us through exactly what it would look like from your okay, perspective? What, what it would look like, if, if you put this up there, then I will be going up there to ask to be arrested. Okay, this is to say we are not allowed on your premises, but this was brought out for only government buildings, libraries, schools, hospitals. Now, why would your council go and put it on our Udupas without even, even considering the insult, you know, the insult to the, the, the hapu, the iwi, the, the, the cultural insult, you know, under Tatiti, the whole lot. But that's my answer to there. If you bring this in, what it means, I can be arrested to go there to be with my loved ones. Okay, cool. No, th th thank you. And, and I guess that the, the other side of that is if, if that doesn't happen, I guess I just want to get an understanding of, of what exactly it is that you want to be able to do that, that you're worried that you aren't going to be able to do or that you're going to be arrested for. Is it just visiting the site? No, 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 no. If you're going to put this into your bylaw, mm. we will be going all up there to be arrested. Okay. If you're gonna if you're gonna abuse bylaws, government powers, for your bylaws, we will be fighting it. We'll be fighting it outside your building. Hmm. We'll have 22 chapters here. We'll be up there having events every weekend. We're not gonna we're not gonna let you get away with us not remembering our loved ones. We'll, people go there to remember their loved ones, not to go there and um, a, 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 a up, look at other people's and, and have your certain opinion. That's cause your that's that's called your bill. Of, of, of expression, your build of freedom. Like when, when I had this not long ago with the Wairau Council, they said anything like that with complaints and that, they're going to just leave it with the police. Okay? That's the common answer. Mm. Okay, cool. Thank you. And could I just signal to, to Wendy and Anita, it would be great if we could maybe have a workshop um, just to talk through this and I'd be interested in understanding how other councils have been managing this as well, just to get an idea of, of what the the common practices. Um, and, and thank you again for coming in to talk to us about this today. Sorry. Yes, no problem. I've got <coughs> Councillor Johnson, then Taku. Um, kia ora, Dennis. Thank you. Um, but um, Josh has answered my questions and requested Sorry. a Sorry, Taku. Yeah, I guess uh, there's, there's a couple of things, bro. Um, good to see you here, vent, put it on the table, bring it up in your face, as it is, how it is. Um, but what I'm interested in is a question that is he asked. Has he already been the president set? Yeah, we've got the paperwork, and it was if we would take off all them kind of things, which we sent a whole lot of stuff in, like the German signs and all that, and will we produce it to 30 centimetres? Okay. And, um, and we just said, well, we could take it to court, but hey, this, it's all good. Sweet ass, as long as we've got something on there, we'll leave it at that. But then after years later, when every time you're going to change council, change employees, someone's always going to have a stab at us. Yeah. But, you know, the main thing is at the end of the day, can you actually use this government bylaw for government buildings on our dead? 
And I think the second component is that if we are going to have a, um, a workshop about it, I think it has to be about how we introduce the tikanga, mm -hmm. you know, what the tikanga looks like in regards, because a lot of the boys are all our boys. Um, so if we can work and talk together and, and, and being able to develop some, some paperwork, some framework around tikanga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, just to, just to answer, answer that, the boys are already decided and settled as is, is they're going to start putting their headstones outside their, their front lawns now. Okay? Oh, you're not going to stop right. it. Regardless, you're not going to stop it. If we can't remember our loved ones, we'll do what we need to be doing. And we will be funding Ngāti Tōr because we need land. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor Hayward. Uh, kia ora mātua, Dennis. Um, question for officers. Uh, is there... Some I'm just trying to uh, yeah, I'm trying to get a sense of where this uh, this incident occurred from uh, council officers' perspective. Is there a proposed review mm -hmm. of this bylaw that's coming up that triggered this conversation, or is there some other factor that's playing out here that we are that that we have not yet uncovered yet? Because I would think it'd take a lot to get uh, someone like Dennis to come here and talk in a space that you know and have his voice heard. Uh Kia ora. So um, just for clarity, we have never prevented uh, mongrel mob from attending any of our cemeteries. That's not, we have never done that. Um, the issue that Dennis is raising is about what is on the headstones. And we have said consistently for some time, but unfortunately inconsistently at points, um, no gang insignia, but you are allowed to show your affiliation so you can have things that demonstrate that you are um, a member, member of the Mungle Mob um, family, um, but the full insignia is not acceptable. There are insignias on headstones up there already. Um, uh, we're not asking for their removal. We accept that was um, an error. Um, so it does come down to what you regard as offensive, and we have used that um, legislation as well, which which talks about the um, distance from government buildings. So... Um, you know, these are interesting things to negotiate in our community because everybody lives here. We provide um, cemetery space for everybody. Um, how do we get through that? Uh, we don't have a lot of written complaints, but people do give you us got feedback one. Um, because of the nature of um, the issue, probably. So... Um, Happy to workshop this. It's not a bylaw. It's our cemeteries management plan that guides this. Um, it's not particularly up for review at the moment, but um, we can certainly workshop it in the new year. My last letter was you had already put it into here, and I can't see it on your website. Thank, thank you, Dennis. Um, last question, Councillor Ford. Sorry, it was just more, you know, I mean, if, if given the chance, an atheist will say, you know, a religious cross is offensive. I... Uh, I think, um, I don't know if we got an answer to Jeff's question around why this has triggered. You know, tri I think you got the answer from Wendy. Some of them got through. So a staff member... Yeah, but what's offensive? Can you explain so, me that? What is offensive? And then and then the other thing, I, I'm sort of getting a little feel of that it's behavioural issues that, that maybe cross over into, that don't cross over into council, that maybe should be police issues. So, yeah, that's all. Okay. Well, Dennis, we are going to workshop it, so that you, that's something positive. Thank you, year. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. That's it. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Ask, you know, what is offensive? Ask the uh, Human Rights Commissioner. Is it... Just do the things that... And answer them. Thank you. Um, and next up, we have our Porora Brass Band, Edric Child and Sandra Jones. You've got five minutes each. Would you both like to come up? Oh, you're going to play for us. <laughs> so I break out into a fanfare. <laughs> okay. Time at night. <laughs> Who's going first? I'll let one of you start with your microphone. Thank you. Engā rangatira kua hui hui mai nei. 
ka tuku mihi māua ki a koutou. E mahi ana au, hei ka whakahaere ki te pēne pārahi o Pariroa, uh, ko Edric Child tōku ingoa. Uh, nō reira tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for giving us a few minutes of your time today. Uh, my name is Edric Child. I'm the chair of Trust Porirua City Brass. Uh, with me is our committee uh, secretary and my fellow Cornwich player, Sandra Jones. Why are we here? Well, we're just here to ask the council to agree to renew the lease for the place that we call the band room. Um, we just have three short points to explain to you today. One, who we are. Secondly, uh, why we think we matter to this community. And thirdly, what we need to keep contributing uh, to the cultural life of Porirua uh, and why we think that's a reasonable request. So, first, who we are. We're your local brass band. Um, we're all amateur musicians. Uh, this is our hobby. We just love learning music, uh, teaching music and sharing our music uh, with other people. Our senior band has members uh, ranging in age from 15 years old to 84 years old. It's a pretty, pretty uh, uh, inclusive form of, of, of music. Uh, we also have a junior band where we teach young kids uh, the joy of music, and we just run it as a, as a non-profit group uh, by volunteer members. That's who we are. Secondly, uh, our place in this community, well, we've been your local brass band for 50 years, so we feel like we have... We and our members have grown up with this city as it's grown up. Um, and in fact, just last month at our concert, the mayor will remember she presented a 50-year long service certificate to one of our founder members. That was a, a special moment. Um, so we're the band you see playing Christmas carols all over the city uh, during December. Uh, we're the band that plays anthems and bugle calls uh, at your Anzac Day ceremonies around, around the city. <clears throat> and we represent Porirua City each year at national contests all around uh, the country. Uh, brass band music is one of those genres that has a strong competition flavour to it. Uh, where we carry on the street march a huge flag with the city's coat of arms on it. It looks exactly the same as that one and it's at least that big. <clears throat> Uh, we're based on uh, We Nero Drive, which I know is named after one of this city's very first deputy mayors. Um, we've always enjoyed excellent relations uh, with the council, and uh, we've had kind support from all of those leaders behind you uh, over the years. Um, so thirdly, what do we need to keep going? Just our home. Um, 35 years ago, we fundraised and built ourselves our own bespoke building on a site that was leased to us uh, by the council, and it's a great spot. Uh, as you can imagine, brass and percussion instruments are not always the quietest musical instruments in the world. Um, <clears throat> so it's nice to be uh, out of the way so we don't cause uh, any nuisance uh, without, with, um, with noise. We've got really good neighbours. We've got the mini golf uh, park on one side of us, <laughs> uh, Get Fixed Bicycle Cafe on the other side of us. Um, and in fact, our summer concert in a couple of months is going to be on the grass outside that cafe. <clears throat> We need more than just an empty space uh, in which to gather for a couple of hours each week. We need quite a large rehearsal room in which uh, 30 or more um, uh, musicians can set up and operate, and we need heaps of storage for all of our gear. Uh, just think about those tubers, trombones, uh, timpani drums, xylophones. They don't pack up very easily. Um, so our building's really been perfect for us. It's got acoustic uh, soundproofing. Uh, this would sound pretty loud if I played it in this low-ceiling room. I've got a... So, um, We've got uh, several large storage rooms, a sheet music library, a, a, a uniform wardrobe for all of our um, beautiful uniforms, um, and, um, and, and meeting rooms. Um, it's used for band rehearsals three or four nights a week uh, for individual practice for those people who can't practice at home uh, due to their circumstances, and, and for teaching plenty of uh, keen young students. So we think we take pretty good care of it. Um, it has, because we've had it so long, it has a bit of a... a uh, a sense of being a meeting place and a sense of history in just the kind of same way that a beloved sports clubhouse uh, uh, would. Uh, you can imagine our, um, our, our walls are covered with half a century's worth of, you know, honours, photos, trophies. Um, at our annual awards event a couple of weeks ago, I presented to one of our members a trophy that was older than he was, and so I tried to explain to him the sense of how much of a taonga uh, this, uh, this, this, this award was. Um, of course, our band room is a taonga uh, in, in its own way, uh, too, to us at least, uh, and we've named it after our founder, uh, Louis Fox. Our lease is up for renewal, that's why we, we're here today. Uh, we'd prefer 
a long-term lease, if possible, of, of, of up to about 10 years. Uh, that's option four in your agenda papers today. Option four, just underline that one. Um, uh, we have prepared a very short handout, which we'd like to table with the Mayor's permission, if that's all right. We've prepared this because you've got an office, officer's report, which is a very, very good officer's report. Um, but it does seem to suggest that uh, we're perhaps not a good long-term fit for this area. Actually, we think we're a really good fit. Um, and this very short handout um, explains the reasons why. Now, I won't read it out. I, I, I don't want to bore you, and I haven't got much time um, left. But very, very briefly, uh, f first of all, um, our activity is consistent with the legal status of this land. Uh, this particular part of, of, the, of the area is local purpose community reserve, not recreation or, or, or scenic or nature. That's a good start. Secondly, um, our use is consistent with the objectives of the Reserve Management Plan because actually, uh, in fact, that plan um, expressly allows for the continued use of buildings uh, like this on the reserve. Um, thirdly, we actually think we're a pretty uh, harmonious, no pun really intended, a harmonious blend with, um, uh, with the surrounding environment and that's why I've included a bunch of photographs to how, show you how we fit in, in the setting um, around us. Uh, we don't disrupt the amenity values of the surrounding area. We don't get in the way of um, the coastal walkways or any plan of future you might want to do to that or the foreshore area. And we don't disrupt other public uses of the adjacent land. And fourthly and finally, we we'll just note that um, the officer's report doesn't uh, um, identify any specific development project or other planned use for this site. Um, as we all know, of course, even when big ideas do emerge in someone's head, they can take a very long time to progress to fruition. So what, what we would suggest is that there's, there's no particular um, reason for beginning a process now or soon uh, to, to move us out. We, we think we're not in the way, and so we think it's actually quite sensible to keep making good use of that spot uh, for as long as we can, rather than look to create a vacant lot for no clear, uh, determined uh, purpose. That's us. Um, we, know, we do know we're really lucky to have created and kept this space uh, for a long time. Uh, we think we'd really struggle to find another home that worked for us as well as this. And if we didn't have one, uh, we probably couldn't function. Um, so that's all. We seek your endorsement to renew our lease for another generous term, preferably one close to option four in your papers, and that'll help continue the strong relationship with this council that we've already had. I will resist the urge uh, to play um, a fanfare now, but happy to take any part I. Thank you. Um, I've got Councillor Trillin, then Councillor Wardle. Kia ora, thank you. Um, thank you very much for coming in. It's always much uh, easier with these sorts of papers when the, the people being impacted actually come in and, and, and talk to us and willing to answer questions. So I do really appreciate that. Yes. I've got a couple of things I, I wanted to check with you. Um, the first was, could, could you just talk to us a little bit about what, what would the impact be on your group if the lease was not going to be renewed? What, would, that, would that be the end of the organisation, or how significant would it, that be? It, it could be. Um, until we found another place that worked really well for us, um, we'd probably have to put our gear into storage. We couldn't rehearse. We couldn't attend national contests. Uh, our next big um, event is in Dunedin um, next next year, which we're planning, which we're planning to, to head to. Um, it's not as easy as just um, hiring a community hall one, once once a week. Not only because that might be acoustically un un unsuitable, but with the amount of um, gear and stuff that you have, it's it's, it's difficult to be a sort of m move in for an hour, an hour or so, and then and then and then move out again and put your stuff back into the into the storage container. Mm. Cool. No, th th thank you. And that actually sort of feeds into my next question, which was the um, the option that's been recommended for us in the paper that we're going to look at talks about providing some time to potentially try and find a new site um, over a period of up to, I think, about five years or so. What would the criteria be for a site to be suitable for you to be able to relocate? Or what are the specific things that you'd, you'd need as part of that site? Um, it's not being close to a residential area. It's, um, um, yes, it, so, so being compatible with, with our neighbours, both us with them and then with us. But it's, it's, it's mostly 
it, it, it's mostly the building and its facilities. The size, you need a very large rehearsal area. Um, our rehearsal space, main rehearsal space, would be about the size of this room, room here, but it's all of the other associated rooms uh, that go with it for all, all of the storage and your, your individual practice rooms and your, your other facilities as well. And so you need a decent, you can't, can't be any old building because you need a decent sized um, uh, ceiling space for the um, acoustically and, 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 and fit it out with, with acoustic panelling and such like. Mm. Uh, Cool, thank you. And then my final question was just um, in relation to the options we're looking at. It sounds like you're familiar with the council paper. Yes, thanks. So um, our option three has been recommended for the three plus two. Yeah. Um, could you just speak to us a little bit about how you feel about that option? And in particular, um, with the, the proposal in there about it, giving you some time to potentially relocate, if that was to be the pathway we went down, uh, what sort of support would you need from council to make that actually viable for the long-term yeah. survival of the band? Yeah. So if the council was determined to to, to move us on, uh, that's that's a five years is a decent and generous time frame to allow us to plan plan and scope and find and build potentially a uh, or, or fit out um, a new place. Um, what we would what we would say is do that when you're on the verge of having something real and special and great to do with that site, not just in the hope of fr freeing it up, quote unquote, so that it might be available, you know, as and when plans, plans emerge in, you know, five, 10, 15 years, but you've just got an em empty lot um, in the meantime. Sorry, Councillor Trillin, was there another part of your question I missed? Um, so, so yeah, it was just to, if we were to go down that path. Mm. What, oh, what support what, would we? Uh, yeah, what support would you need from council to make that viable? Yeah, we'd we'd hope to tap into the um, specialist knowledge and connections of both officers and elected members to help us scope and and find potential sites or potential buildings um, elsewhere elsewhere in, in the in the community. You'd probably have um, some better knowledge and better connections than us to know us where to look and who we might want to talk to and start negotiating with. Cool. Uh, and, and, and if it's, you know, council land and we can do some, some sort of deal there or, or even a, an existing council building that we could work with, um, that, that'd be helpful too. But, but as I, um, so yeah, that'd be a really useful way to help us. But as I say, our, our preferences, unless and until you, you can say, guess what, we've got this amazing plan to do on this exact little spot of land and we want to start it, you know, in six months time. Um, we're a good use for that site in the meantime, for as long as we can have it. Cool. Uh, that's all my questions. Councillor Wardle. Mm. Yeah, Mons, uh, thank you so much for coming in. I've driven past there. Many, I remember driving past there as a child and getting blown away by the sound coming out of the open doors on a hot summer's day. So it's... Um, <laughs> no, it was that bad. <laughs> oh, no, it, I didn't say it was bad. It was good. Um, my question is more for Wendy. Um, when, do we have any timeline on when we'd like to do something with the Winera Reserve? Can we discuss that in the context of the paper? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, because I, I personally don't know the answer to that, so it'd be better mm -hmm. to do it when that agenda items on. Taku. No, I'd just, like, I'd just like to support that we need the band. The city needs. Um, every city has its own local sort of brass band. So you know whatever whatever rationale we come to and agree with you, I, I'm 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 all for finding a place, if if that's the case, mm -hmm. and I've and talking to, to to my own people over at Ngati Tour, we, you know there might be something there, but I'm all for having, I mean you get the best view there, best view, and besides Louis Fox taught me how to play tennis sax. Thank you. Some, thank of, you. some <laughs> of you know well, you know his son Roger Fox, who yeah. ended up being very big in yeah. the jazz. Councillor Leggett. Yeah, I can't trump that, Taku. <laughs> um, I, just, just a question. I, I, I guess um, maybe in the context of the, mm. the paper itself, but just out of interest, it must have got you thinking. You know, you, you've been, you've been hinting about building a new building, etc. If this was forced upon you, um, have you thought about uh, how easy is it to shift the existing building? Yeah, we haven't. Uh, we don't know haven't. the answer. That's a short answer. No. We'd need expert engineering advice. So I, I honestly couldn't, wouldn't even like to guess. Mm. That's fine. Councillor Filo. Uh, yeah, Councillor, you could just answer my question. Um, <laughs> it, it's because it sounds like the building is quite, um, is quite nice. It's quite lovely. You've got lots. Yeah. So yeah, it's still, the possibility it's still in, of still in good condition, but it's quite and it's quite bespoke. Mm. So yeah, I mean, 
be good to know the possibilities of relocating it to a, another site and what that would involve. Yeah, that was, that was it. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Johnson? Look, I'd just like to say I've really enjoyed the brass band around the city over the years and I'd um, be sad to see it go. So I'm very much for keeping you in the city. I just have a question. Um, how do you propose, um, do you have, have you looked at funding sources to recreate your building or to move it as, as has already been raised? No, that would lie ahead of us if we were given notice effectively that we were expected to move on within a few years. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Duncan? Yeah, thanks. Look, I, I remember as an apprentice at Kapimana News back in 1969 when the editor then was um, working with Louis Fox to build this band. <laughs> and um, it was a superb effort. And, and it, it is uh, at our Anzac Day ceremonies, they're superb. They're mm. great. They perform a fantastic service. Um, I, I see you have 30-odd members in the, in the club. How far out from those people does it extend into the community and do you, how do you encourage younger people into the... Uh... Yeah, so we, we have good connections with some, some local schools. We have um, uh, tutors who are, who, are, who are band members, experienced musicians who, have, um, who take students from about year 7, 11, 11 years old uh, upwards. Um, they've got students at the moment from Adventure, Marae Roa, Papakofai Discovery, uh, Mana and Porirua Colleges as, as well. So we've got a bunch of students from around the, um, uh, around the place and, and slightly further south across the border as well. Um, into in Tawa. Um, so, you know, we've got about, um, this year I think we've been teaching about 20 young students, about 10 of those play in our, um, in our, in our junior band. Um, and w we look for opportunities to collaborate with other groups too, whether it's local um, performing arts um, groups. Uh, we've, we've, we've done that a few times. Uh, concerts with, with choirs, we did a magnificent concert with the Virtuoso Strings group there, just wonderful. Um, a couple of years ago, we're hoping to do something again with them um, um, quite quite soon. And, um, you know, over at Takapuwa here, we've, you know, sent buglers over for Tangi and for Anzac Day um, services and, 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 and things like that. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, both of you. Um, if you'd like to take a seat, we um, will get on to you. You're in the papers, but I don't know if you want to stay and listen or not. But thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for, thanks for your time, everybody. Kia pai tōkou tarā. Okay, any conflicts of interest declarations, anybody? No? Um, notification of extraordinary business. I'd like to move the late item, which was the um, audit and risk item which you were um, sent out. So I just want to move it to, to put on... Thank you, seconded by Councillor Duncan. All those in favour? All those against, carried. Oh, you want me to state why it can't be delayed? Everyone, I think everyone knows why it can't be delayed. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's got to be considered in public excluded under the grounds of protecting the privacy of the natural person. It can't be delayed because the appointment process needs to be completed. So we need to go back to our person. Okay, confirmations of minutes from our first council, 31st of October and the 10th of November. I'm going to move both of them to put them on the table, seconded by Councillor Waddle. Any issues with any of those? Okay. All those in favour? All those against? Carried. Hand it over to Councillor Leggett. Committee recommendations. Thank you, Mayor Baker. I'd like to move the recommendations of Te Puna Korero meeting of the 1st of December um, in regard to the uh, notice of motion, endorsement of the Make It 16 campaign. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Trillin. All those in favour? All those against? Carried. Um, I better put my mayor's report in, which I had zoomed past. Sorry, because it's it's been a really busy five weeks. So if you haven't seen Facebook, I'll tell you what we've been up to. Uh, there seems to have been a lot of work by done by everybody, all the councillors and the deputies. So um, we obviously had our welcoming pofuri at Takapua here, and then we had our joint training day with KCDC and GWRC. And for those who didn't get to go, um, I hope we do something else so you can attend. We had the Partners Porirua Youth Awards, and I have to say that was a really good event. We had a number of councillors there um, and celebrated our young, our young people and, and local business with Downer taking out the top award. 
Um, we've had a lot of clashes this, this month. I attended the Wellington um, Airport Awards where the Kiwi Community Assistance took out our Supreme Award um, while Kylie sat in the building next door at the Wellington Pacifica business event. So uh, we've had the ambassador from Peru out. Um, I think he's more keen on Whitakers than, than here, but he, he was really good. He's looking forward to trying to do more things in our city and doing things with our schools. So I'm sure we'll he hear more from him again. Um, Saturday the 19th it was a really wet day in Porirua, apart we had some obvious flooding. Uh, a few of us went to the KP Marine Open Day, followed by the Plimerton School Gala. Um, and then in the evening, we had I had the Porirua Brass Band Concert up at AOT College, and Kylie went, obviously, with a number of you, Izzy, Mose. well, there's a number of you around the table, went to the Tawa Samoa um, celebration, which, which was huge. I went to the first Wellington Phoenix um, game at the stadium, along with all the mayors in the region. Um, and if you haven't been to a game, there's plenty coming up. And obviously, we've got next year, we've got the World Cup coming. So the women's soccer is starting to take off. Um, I judged the Paramatta School speech competitions for the year five and six. Really impressive. And I say the child that we picked went through to win um, his age in the Paramoana with a Dawn Raids um, speech, and it was like he had been there for a year six child. Very impressive. Then um, most of us went to Creek Fest, obviously, which was a huge day, huge day I think, from three o'clock, very successful. And then in the afternoon, I did the Bulavanaka Art Launch at Pataka. There's been a lot going on at Pataka. Saturday the 26th um, was a cram day for all of us. Jeff and I started off at the Cancer Society with the Strawberry Appeal with me doing the strawberries and him on the barbecue, and he definitely beat me. Um, <laughs> at nine, nine in the morning, everyone wanted sausages. Um, and then we had the opening of the Fame and Hair Beauty Salon and the Panakiki uh, Pacifica store, which was a huge celebration for them. And then the evening, Kylie and I went to the La Manga concert by, um, in town, so that was another great evening. Um, we had the Waitangarua Village flag raising and with the blessing of their new signs. Um, so a couple of us went to that, and then I, I spoke at the Rotary of Plimerton and the BA5 this month. Mike attended the Bishop Viard College Prize Giving for me because I had something else on that night. And then uh, I think it was Jeff Mose and I went to the John Miskey's Samoan Heritage um, launch of the VAR at Onipoto. Um, sorry you had COVID, Izzy, because that was amazing, watching that boat roar down the harbour. It was very impressive. So he, he said to me a couple of days ago he is going to be doing it with the kids, but he needs to train a lot of people first. Um, Kylie and I did the senior citizens lunch, and that was fantastic to be able to chat with our older people and serve them. I didn't realise so many people actually knew who we were and where they came from, so they were certainly up, and the um, performances from the singers was really good. Um, prize givings again. Whitby went to Whitby Collegiate prize giving for me because I had the civil defence Defence Emergency Management in Wellington, um, which I'm now back as chair for the region, um, and then Porirua Prize giving in the evening. We've had I've had the mosaic exhibition at Pataka, Teresa Tales of Aotearoa. Um, came back with a few items there that I purchased. Not sure Phil's very impressed, so I don't know where they're going. Um, <laughs> then last Friday we had the opening of the New Zealand Opera Performance, the Star Navigator at the Arena, and that was absolutely awesome, even if I found the seating a little uncomfortable with my long legs. Saturday was the Riding for the Disabled Christmas Party at Battle Hill. And then Sunday morning I joined the us as well, cleaning movement, doing the Okawai Lagoon down here. And they came away with um, about 600k of rubbish. And then Barbara Edmonds and I went to the St Albans Church for the uh, Christmas readings in Pauahatanui. We had our first citizenship this week with 29 families and 51 residents being sworn in. So that was great. Um, then we had, Mike and I went to the Mary Potter Hospice this week, caught up with the CEO, um, and they explained there's nearly 200 families from Porirua that actually go through the doors there. So fantastic um, alteration and a great drop-in centre. Um, Jeff and I went to the Year 6 Leavers at Titar Bay School. First time it was held outside due to COVID with the principal zooming in. But it was wonderful to have to sit outside in the sun. Next time I'll need a sun hat, but really good idea for them. 
Last night I hosted the JPs um, from the region at Pataka uh, for an event to thank them for all the work they do. And then I had the City of Porirua Cadet Unit Prize Giving down on Naritoa Domain, which was absolutely full of camper vans and everybody down there looking at the orcas. So it was a big night last night in Porirua. So um, that brings it to a wrap, really, for me. So I hope you all have a great Christmas. Um, we've got a really big year ahead of us next year. So I hope everybody has a break. <laughs> Thank you. Taku, I'll hand to you. Have you got a report? <laughs> a wrap-up? <laughs> um, no, just to say that it's been a, it's been a good year. It's, it's been a great year. We finished our year off with our AGM being held in Nelson. Um, the Constitution at, the, at a couple of AGMs ago suggested that we take our AGM every four years to a different location. So this year it was down in Nelson, and um, as well as then, I think uh, Wendy was down there, came down. And uh, it was a very good report, actually. We're in a very sort of healthy position, but also preparing for a lean one next year. And um, uh, we have over 540 staff now working, and it's busy. Wow. And I um, just want to say that uh, if, if we can maintain our, our strength as a council and as local iwi, which we've always done and always continue to do, is to actually, if anything, Falls in the way. We've got a good. We've got a good system of sitting down and talking about how we move forward as both the iwi and the partnership with city council. So thank you all very much. Thank you for what you do. You've been called out so many times. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we move to our first recommendation, eleven point one, expiry of the brass band lease. So I'm going to move to put on the table the recommendation that we have for the three plus two, seconded by Councillor Leggett. Sorry, open for discussion. Who's, oh yes, Councillor Filo, and then, sorry. Councillor Trillin, sorry, then Councillor Filo. Cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking it would be um, re really useful if we could get um, uh, some officer feedback around what the long-term aspirations for that site do look like. Mm -hmm and whether that involves um, anything that does need to happen in the next few years. Um, I've got a couple others as well, but I'll just ask that first. Okay. Um, can, can I just say, I'm uh, Ruben is not here today, and he is the person who's most likely to know the answer to that. Um, the only thing I can offer is that it is an area that is changing reasonably significantly right now. Um, and as you, uh, council um, councillors who've been around for a while will recall, there has been um, some aspiration to uh, reinvigorate that space and make it much more publicly accessible. So it has been a sort of even a short-term aim, which is why we've put the um, pop-ups down there, um, but that's been, you know, part of an overall plan to reinvigorate that area. In terms of specifics, I'm uh, probably short of the right people in the room to really give you the right answer on that. So, so just to follow from that then, is it critical that a decision is made on this today? Or would it be possible for us to let this lie on the table for when Ruben is available so we can make a fully informed decision? Through the chair, can I just ask Matt, um, in terms of the lease expiring on the 30th of December, do we have the ability to roll it over for a short period of time? I, yeah, I think we could do it's that. It's okay under the, yes, so the answer is we could roll it over for a short period of time and um, bring that information back to you in the new year. Yeah, because I think I'll just know. I found the um, the discussion that we had with representatives of the band very, very useful. I've got a large number of questions that it'll be good to get good answers to. So I think what I'd like to do is move that we let this lie on the table for the first council meeting in the new year um, and make a decision then. Second that. Oh, you can't actually move it because you've already spoken. So I would suggest Councillor Philo is speaking next. Would she like to move something? Because you've already spoken, Josh. You spoke okay, to Okay, yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to recommend so that someone she was uh, the next that speaker up. I will indicate my support for that. <laughs> Councillor Philo. Yeah, I would like to move a procedure motion that this lie on the table. I'll second that. Thanks. Seconded by Councillor Ford. All those in favour? All those against? Carried. 
Yeah. Never said a word. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Can I can I just ask that you provide me with all the questions you would like the answers to, so that we can um, answer those before we bring it back, which we will do for the first council meeting in the new year. Thank you both. Sorry. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Okay. Right. So we move to 11.2, reserve management for Titahi Bay Beach. I move that to put it on the table. Seconded by Councillor Ford. All those in favour? Oh, sorry. We we'll have open for discussion first. I'm racing ahead. Sorry, my tired eyes. Councillor Hayward, did, uh, did you have a question? <laughs> Sorry. No, no question. Just a comment on uh, on the consultation. Uh, first of all, there's an appeal to the public um, to uh, participate in this process. Um, I, I'm hopeful that we'll get a large number of people from all walks of life to participate in this part of the process. Um, secondly, I would be keen to continue to see the role of Ngāti Tō as mana whenua in uh, sharing their vision as part of our Tatiriti partner. Um, and um, uh, as we go through this process uh, as well. Finally, um, can I... Uh, I was not going to do this as a point of order. Uh, I was gonna, sorry, I was going to do this as a point of order, but I might just suggest it now. Mm -hmm. The maps that have been circulated to councillors, would that be incorporated into the public record? Yes, we can. We can table them, yes. I would think that it would be appropriate to do so, just to point out that what we have seen that the public will see as well as part yep. of that process in fish, as part of a fishbowl process. Kia ora. Not a problem. Anybody else? Councillor Duncan. Yeah, just um, item 14 says information will be available in the council building foyer and at the main council library. Can it also be at the Titahi Bay Library as well? Yes. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, all those for, aye, aye. all those against, carried. 11.3, request to consult on Tereti Hall. I'm moving that to put it on the table, seconded by Councillor uh, Trillin. Open for discussion. Councillor Duncan. Just going back to the original one, we supported option one, I assume. In yes, the... <laughs> I put that one when I said it, sorry. So any questions on the Tereti Hall? Yes, Councillor Hayward. Um, Council, uh, questions for officers. Thank you for preparing this document, especially the Statement of Intent, um, which covers off some of the uh, uh, issues that were raised by the community when this issue last came up. Can we just be clear and have this on the record so the public know, with regards to the options where the lease would expire, we would go out to uh, a, a potential leaseholding process again, another tender process, any of the current leaseholders could reapply again as part of that process if that was if council agreed to that process? Through the chair, um, yes, if option three um, comes out as the preferred option that council chooses, then yes, there'll be a lease, there'll be a tender process that follows that and anyone can obviously submit on that. Okay, no more questions. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Councillor Filo. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so uh, it was really good to workshop this and uh, see you've come back and you've made those adjustments to the, the consultation um, survey. And I also think that um, given that it's coinciding with the, the Tite Bay Master Plan, um, that, that, it's, that it's a good thing too. Yeah, that it'll, it, good use of, uh, better use effectively of, of your time, officer's time. So, um, yeah, I'll be supporting option one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Councillor Duncan. Just, just a matter of clarification, item 10 tells us that the one month consultation period will start in late early February. Is that between <laughs> the 11th and 14th or something? <laughs> uh, through the chair. Maybe I just need to say February. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? So we're moving option one. <laughs> All those in favour? All those against? Carried. Waste management, 11.4. Move that one to put it on the table. Seconded by Councillor Leggett. Do 
you would like to speak to this, Nigel, or would you just like any questions? Any questions? Yes, Councillor Haywood. Um, thank you uh, for the preparation of this report. Can I get a, qu uh, a query, uh, sorry, get a confirmation rather from my officers about when the Ministry for the Environment contacted councils around the country with this requirement that uh, they get an indication from councils around the preparation of a waste minimisation plan? When did that actually happen? Um, as far as I'm aware, they, they haven't. Um, we were informed um, early earlier on this year um, well, not, not too early, a um, couple of months ago, that we were required to do this. We have gone back to the Ministry and indicated that we disagree with their assessment. OK, so understanding that disagreement, in the two months that have happened, or a couple of months, let's be charitable and say three months for the lack of argument, uh, were the MFE aware that, you know, that during that time period we also had an election on and there would be items that would be considered purga? Through the, through the chair... Um, these plans come up every six years under legislation. This has never happened before. Nigel has sent a letter back to the MFE on behalf of councils saying how annoyed we are by this because this is simply a bureaucratic paper. It's um, section 14 and the conclusion that explains what all the councils were doing it. You could see that we're doing it, but they require somebody in the MFE, as it said, we want to see the proof of the council doing it. So we've all had to rush around and do these papers. So a letter has gone back and it, it goes to the point of where's the legislation that requires this? The view that I share as well resonates very strongly with me, the frustration about these types of bureaucratic hoops that have to be jumped through. As to the substance of the waste, uh, of the need to go with a, a, a completely new approach with a waste minimisation plan, uh, I'm supporting this because... We can continue to work with a waste minimisation plan from the regional perspective that is tinkering on the edges. But government policies have now allowed us an opportunity to look at this in a completely new way. And furthermore, uh, tinkering along the edges of a plan that has really not given us tremendous increases in the diversion and reduction of waste, of solid waste, means that we do need to do something considerably different. And for that reason, I strongly support this approach. Kia ora. Councillor Trillin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, so support this, just some clarifying questions. Um, so, and this is just in terms of developing my understanding of the, the significance of the plan, I guess, and the impact that it's going to have. When we're having discussions um, around the council table around things like potentially changing the way that we do rubbish bins as a city, for example, or diversion of organic waste from the landfill, is this the plan that we specifically put those sorts of things into? And, and what will the process of developing that plan look like in terms of engagement with council? Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, the, the Waste Management and Minimisation Plan is our guiding document for how we do all of our waste management activities. Um, in terms of the process that we're, we're following, we have the Joint Committee, um, which is a representative from all each one of our councils in the Wellington region. Mm -hmm. So Councillor Hayward and Councillor Duncan represent us. And... The process that we're going through now is we've, we've um, undertaken what's called a waste assessment. So that sets out where we've been over the last six years, what we've achieved or not achieved, and then that goes to the medical officer of health for a, a, a brief assessment, and they provide us some, with us some guidance on, on their views. So where we've got to right now is that we have the, the eight territorial authorities um, through the joint committee have engaged Becca to assist us developing a brand new plan. It's um, and in terms of opportunities for, for councillors to be actively involved, um, we will be having workshops over the next um, five to six months on different parts of the plan, and that'll be your, your opportunity to help, help us set the direction for where you want to go for not just the next six years, but probably the next 30, because we've got some major infrastructure that is likely to be needed. So those opportunities will be coming up, and we can... I, I, would like us to have um, more of a focus from our council on the on the local action plan, which is part, each council has a component in there. So I think that's very important that you have your views in, in that. So there will be definitely opportunities for that. Cool. Th thank you very much. And in that case, yeah, I'll, I'll just use this opportunity very quickly to indicate my strong support. I'll be advocating for um, council-funded rubbish bins in the way that Lower Hutt is doing and also something in the compost space for diversion of organic waste from the landfill as well. Thanks very much, Nigel. The Liggett? You may, you may have answered the question. I was just slightly confused about 
uh, us being involved. Is this a plan for us? This is a regional plan. Just explain to me when that regional plan will be developed and what our input into that will be. All right, okay. Yeah. The, um, the eight, through the joint committee, the eight councils in, in Wellington have agreed to develop a joint plan. Okay, so we're going to set out um, a future direction which helps us work together, um, on, particularly on major infrastructure projects like um, the organics process. And um, but, so that'll set out a, a, a small number of, of commonly um, used things. So if we want to make sure that everyone in the region knows exactly um, about recycling, we have a consistent approach right across the region. So that's, that's that sort of thing. But the local action plan is very much focused on what we, we as a council can and can do. Does that answer your question? So the local plan will be a subset of the, of regional, the regional plan? plan? Yeah. Okay. So there'll be eight of those within the regional plan. Within the regional plan. And okay. when is this likely to be finished? Um, we have to have it adopted by um, the 30th of um, October at the very latest. 2023. Yeah. Yeah. But ideally okay. we will be bringing that to you um, in July, August. Okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else? Okay, all those in favour? All those against? Carried. 11.5, Wellington Regional Triennium Agreement. I move it to put it on the table. Seconded by Council Legal. We're oh, just sorry. agreeing to option three, aren't we? Yes, the recommended would receive the report and agree to formally proceed with the development of the new Wellington Regional Strategic Management. That one? Yeah. Yes. One and two? Yep. Three. We did. Yeah. So, Wellington Regional Triennium, I've moved it. Who's it seconded by? Councillor Philo, thank you. Any questions on this one? Councillor Trillin. Yeah, cheers. Um, I'm broadly supportive. Just wanted to, to clarify, we talked a little bit informally about wanting to try to be a bit more proactive, maybe at a governance level in terms of engagement with Greater Wellington over this term compared to last mm. term. I, I wonder if we need a formal indication of something within this around that, or if that's something that we can just more informally organise? That will go uh, into this one. It, it won't go in here. No. Uh, this is um, the entire region. If we change anything in here, we have to go back round and get everyone else to agree. Mm. Uh, so if it's uh, between one of us and the other, um, we can just do that outside of, of this agreement. Um, we take it in turns, each council takes it in turn to draft this. This is drafted by Carterton. It's a statutory document. It's inclined to be descriptive rather than aspirational, um, yeah. if that's a yeah. nice way of putting it. But um, yeah, so, um, but certainly those aspirations we have with Greater Wellington, we, we can, we can uh, advance those without changes here. Cool. And, and, yeah, and I'll just indicate the reason I flagged that was just reading through the report um, in the, well, sorry, not, not the report in the actual document under the consultation section at 5.1 with the, the three specific types of consultation. It talks about meeting in the Mayor's Regional Council Chair Chief Executives, sub-regional forums, and then meetings between staff, but it doesn't speak directly to engagement between councillors at a councillor level. So well, that's in the sub-regional forums, and every time we've had them, we've only had two or three from each council. Yeah. So that's why we've asked them to come to us, so that because it's hard because our council day isn't on the same day, mm. so that's why we get a poor turnout, you know, because everybody's got other jobs and they work, and so we've asked them to come to us. Yeah. Okay, Cole. No, that, that sounds good. Thanks very much. I'm happy yeah. to support. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favour? All those against? Carried. So I move that we go into. Um, Oh, no, we've got the late item. No, that's in public excluded. So I move that we go into public excluded. Seconded by Councillor Duncan. All those in favour? Aye. All those against carried. Two more. 